She did stay close and drink calls, but finds it hard to stay at my side rather than getting around the head. Okay, so, and also, again, you said the same thing. You two, your eight month old tends to wander to the end of the lead, then checks back when they stop. He generally doesn't pull, but is tipping on the edge. Walks are very stop start. Okay, so I spoke about this the other week in relation to walking on a loose lead. And dogs are opportunists, you know, they will only ever do what they are allowed to do. And this sounds really hard, and it sounds really harsh, but it's the truth. Our dogs will only ever do what we allow them to do. So if we're allowing the dog to get ahead of us to the end of the lead, then then that's what they're going to do because they can you know that i am you know why do you do that well because i can you know why do i do that because i can and that's how it is in the animal kingdom and especially with dogs because you know they're opportunistic predators and so what you have to do is um, i'm just looking around for a piece of kit for you so this is your dog okay and this is i need a bigger pen and this is you Okay, so this is your dog walking nicely to heel. So you're walking along, you and your dog's walking nicely to heel, okay? And then what happens is uh, your dog gets ahead of you like that and you, you, you stop. So, so then you know you're saying you stop and then the dog checks himself back to the heel position, okay? Um, or he might get out to the side of you like this to the end of the lead that way and then you correct them and you bring them back. And so the dog's only going to all of these positions because it's allowed to, because there's no consequence for the dog doing it. And so what you have to do is bear in mind that dogs learn through consequences for actions. And so if a dog is getting too far ahead, say they, and you give it a check on the lead, then, and you do it consistently. So you consistently check your dog here, okay? then what will happen is the dog will get to there because it knows it's not going to get checked there but it also knows it's allowed to walk there and so if your dog is getting too far ahead of you on the lead then what you need to do is if you want your dog to walk here then you check it there you know you don't let it get ahead you, you don't let it get further ahead than where you want it to walk because otherwise all you're doing is reinforcing the pathway in the brain so every time the dog repeats an action Every time a dog repeats an action, it's reinforcing your pathway in its brain. And when, I can't remember what age it is now, but when dogs to get to a certain age, and it's the same with us, when we get to a certain age, we don't grow any more neurons. All we do is rearrange the ones that we've already got. It's called neuroplasticity. And so we, we have got all of these neural networks, these neural pathways in the brain. And every time we repeat an action, that neural pathway is strengthened, the connections are reinforced every single time. So if you're letting your dog get um, ahead of you before you're correcting it, then the neural pathway will say get this far ahead and then stop. Whereas what you need is to set the neural pathway up in the brain and you change, um, ch change the pathway so that your dog doesn't get so far ahead. And the only way you can do that is by consistently, every single time, it's like putting a no entry sign. Um, so there's you, there's your dog. There's the no entry sign, let's change the color. There's the no entry sign, okay? So if you want your dog to stop here, walk here, that is where the correction takes place. That becomes the no entry sign. And then what happens is you rearrange the neural pathways in the brain so that the dog understands it's not to go too far ahead. Now the correction can be quite simply check on the lead, it can be a no, I use the double flick, so double flick change direction. And then when the dog's in the correct position, I give it a little warm and fuzzy, so I tell it it's a good dog, or I give it a sweet ear, or I give it a stroke, or a tickle or an ear massage, or I smile. And so that's the biggest problem we think you know that it doesn't matter the dog getting ahead of us occasionally but it really does because we're just making it harder for the dog to get it right you know every time the dog gets it wrong it's setting up neural pathways and reinforcing neural pathways and so we just have to change the pathway in the brain the brain's plastic it'll do it but not if we're inconsistent you have to be consistent with it and so um 
really it's down to you. You need to work out where you want your dog to walk and then you make sure you don't give the dog an opportunity to get it wrong. Okay, that's all it's about. So make sure your dog doesn't have an opportunity to get it wrong by doing something about it before it gets to the wrong position. I hope that makes sense. It's, it's you, you know, it, I mean, it is the carrot and the stick, except we don't use sticks in training, you know. Um, but it, it, it is about just being really, really consistent. And and this is why, you, you know, I don't know if all of the trainers, I mean, they know it now because I've just explained about neuroplasticity, but, you know, being consistent is key and, and a trainer will tell you, you know, you've got to be consistent. They might not know why you have to be consistent, but you, and, and that's the reason why, because you're just reinforcing pathways that you don't want. And it's why, oh, thank you for that, for that feedback. Um, it's why I don't agree with the trainers that say, ignore the behaviour that you don't want. If your dog jumps up on you, just turn your back on it, ignore it. No, don't turn your back on it and ignore it. All you're doing is reinforce the neural pathway that says jump up when you see somebody, give it an alternative behaviour. And so that's what we're doing, you know, with the loose leaf one, we're giving the dog an alternative behaviour. This is the behaviour I want. And I'm doing it with Emrys as well at the minute, you know. He, um, he, he is getting ahead of me and he is, I mean, he's five, just over five months now. And I've put him on a half check because after being um, indoors or in the garden for two weeks, I went out with him and he was pulling on the lead. And I thought, I'm not, I'm not putting up with that, you know. He's, um, he, he's gone through adolescence. If I allow him to pull, then he's going to keep pulling. So I took him off the slip and I put him in a half check. And so now he is getting corrections if he's consistently getting ahead. And he stopped two days um, and, and he is young and it is much harder with a dog that has got a really, really established walking pattern, whereas Emerson's isn't very established. And so I've spent a couple of days just walking, um, walking on the track with him and doing, uh, I put a little video of, of doing figure of eights in the sitting room. And I've been doing that on the field yesterday and today, just doing really big figure of eights on the lead. and. Um, moving across the field so I go on the field at one end and then move across the field doing a figure of eight across the field and then off the other end um, and he's he's I, I I just I won't ac I've got I've got arthritis in my thumbs I will not accept a dog that pulls and and so I have to be really I have to walk I have to walk the talk you know I have to do what I'm saying to do and and the second he gets ahead of where I want them to walk then I'm doing something about it immediately I'm turning I'm changing direction I'm giving them a little check on the half check I'm stopping I'm putting them in a sit I'm putting them in a down and um, as soon as he's changed position I'm giving him a sweetie and then I'm moving again if he's walking really nicely I'm giving him a little sweetie on the move tiny tiny little suits that won't get stuck in his throat you know just tiny um, chopped up little bits of food dog treat um, that I can quite easily just pop in and he knows he's in the right position. So I'm very much going through the operant conditioning, you know, the consequences for actions. I don't like if he gets uh, corrected. If I like it, he gets praise, he gets a reward and so on. And that is the only way to deal with the dog that pulls on the lead or that doesn't pull and that's too far ahead or that wanders off to the side. Um, the important thing to... Uh, remember, and I did a I did a video this morning with my boys walking on the loose lead. The big boys walking on the loose lead is that the lead isn't there to control your dog. The lead is only there as a just in case as an emergency. And so I try to do lots of other things rather than just crack the dog on the lead all of the time. I change direction, I touch, I move, and um, all of the things that I do to teach loose lead walking is in the pet gun dog book. You know, I'll walk along, I'll walk backwards a few paces, tell the dog to come. Um, when they're a bit older and they've got a recall, then I'll do the out and back, out and back, out and back, out and back, uh, which is on the videos and in the book. So it's all there. It's just moving it around. If that makes